two panels with just one hat? Can we do it? Let's find out. Hey guys, it's Greg at Panels R Us. Today we're going to be demonstrating how you can join two different panels or more if you've got enough ports to just one hat or cape the same logic will work on a BBB with Nocta scroller as it does on this Raspberry Pi and Hanson Pi hat. We're going to look at the layout how Xlight treats a matrix uh, with panels, go through some of the logic and then we can demonstrate how we can use that to our advantage to add more than one panel to a single card. So let's dive right in by adding these two panels into x -Lights. Now both the panels are 3P5 panels uh, high by just the one wide. So we've got 64 wide by 96 tall. So let's get these added in. So I'm just going to go into the layout, select the matrix, drag it out roughly the same shape. There we go. And we have got the number of strings is the number of verticals. So we've got 96 on the verts. Now that's 32 for each panel times three. And the nodes per string going across is the width. So on the P5, it's 64. There we go. And we're going to set our start to top left as we always do when setting up a matrix uh, with FPP, which we'll do a little bit later. There we go, so that's our first panel. And then I'm just gonna copy that. So I'm gonna use Control C and Control V to copy that for our second panel, which I'll just put over here. There we go. So now we've put the two panels into X lights we can start to look through the settings next slide to see how it generates the FSEQ files that will later be processed by FPP uh, and pushed out in the form of pixel data to the panels. Looking at the model data in x -Lights, there are two areas that we can pay attention to. The first is the starting location is set to top left. So that means it's going to start on this very top left pixel on the matrix. The next key element is direction. So we've got horizontal, which means it's going to start top left and then it's going to move across pixel by pixel uh, in the FSEQ file to slowly run along the row until it gets to the very last column. Then when it gets to the last column, it will drop down a row and it will start again and keep pushing the data. So we can see that x -Lite is going along in horizontal rows. Now this is useful for us because it means we know how we can convince um, x -Lites and then FPP to display more than one model at a time. What it means is we can, if we put daisy chain two models in X lights. So we set these two matrices to follow each other. So matrix one, and then immediately underneath we daisy chain matrix two. We know that uh, X lights is going to push the data for this top model all the way down to the bottom far corner. And then it's going to come back to the beginning to start the second matrix. So what it basically means is if we set FPP up with two panels, one below the other, then that will be in the right order for us when pushing data out of x -Lights because it's run through horizontally all the way to the bottom. It's then going to come back to the top left of the next model in the chain and do it again. When that data then gets to FPP, if we set them up one below the other, that will work beautifully for our outputs. So let's turn that um, probably gobbledygook for a lot of you into English 
uh, and show you what we mean. So I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 here, uh, it's pre-configured with FPP, it's ready to go. And I've got a, uh, a Hanson P10 hat for my Pi. So I'm just going to put the hat on the Pi. There we go. And that's now ready to go. Now before, before I plug the power into this, I'm just going to show you the connectivity. So we've got three panel output ports on this hat. We're going to use the first one for this left for this right hand panel. We're going to use the second one for the left hand panel. So I've got data cables ready in a true blue Peter moment. So there's one and two and let's get that powered up. Okay, so she's underway. Now I've wired these panels such that the data is going into the bottom and it's then daisy training up, back across and forward again. So the arrows on the back of the panels are pointing up on the bottom one, down on the middle one, because the panel is effectively upside down. The data is coming up at the back there, back across, and then up to the start again, and across. Now it doesn't matter that the matrix is configured for starting top left. As long as FPP knows what we've done with our order, then it'll be fine. And the panel on the side here is configured exactly the same way. So let's go into FPP and see what we're talking about. If you're enjoying this video and you want to make something similar, don't forget to visit us at panelsareus.co.uk. And if you like the t-shirt, lttstore.com. So here we are, here's a, an empty version of FPP. Uh, it's a fresh install, all I've done is configure the IP address and expanded the file system. So I'm gonna go into input output setup and channel outputs. Then go into the LED panels tab and we'll set up our two panels. Now, as I said at the start, we've configured each of these to run off one port. So I'm going to start with the first one here uh, and I'll set that up first. So I'm going to go for a width of one and a height of three. Now, our output cable is going into the bottom panel first. So that's going to be output one panel one is then coming up to panel two. So it's still output one, but moving to panel two. And that panel is upside down. So I need to rotate the arrow to point down. And the last panel is panel three. And that again is now po is pointing up with the arrows of the right way up. So that's how this little matrix is configured uh, to run off one single output on the hat. Now, as we said before, this first panel is configured, it's all going to go horizontal with the data. So when it gets to the bottom, we can then move on to the second panel. So if I now expand my height to six panels, there we go, we can configure the second panel in exactly the same way as we did the first. So starting right at the bottom this time, we're on output two, panel one. We're then on output two, panel two. And this one is upside down. And then we move on to output two, panel three, which is the top one. And again, that's pointing the right way up. So that shows how we've actually configured our two individual panels onto one instance of FPP. Now in here, it just looks like it's one very tall panel, but we know because we're gonna daisy chain the models uh, on the controller in Xlight that one will follow the other 
and so we're just sort of cheating FPP really. Now let's now configure the rest of the settings here. So we've got a, a fast pie, uh, we've got 64 by 32 1 16th scan panels, starting at channel 1, and we're on a hat cap cape. So yeah, as I said, exactly the same logic will work on an Octa scroller with BB or BBB with Octa scroller, um, or if you're running uh, a single color light card, then you could do the same with that as well. If you're running multiple color light cards, then it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, I'll go into that in a separate video. So I'm going to enable panel output and save. So FPP is now restarting, uh, FPPD is now restarting. There we go, it's having to think about it. So let's now enable test mode and we'll see what happens. To start with, I'm just gonna run through a color cycle. So we'll do RGB all none which should give us red, green, blue, white, and then off. So red, green, blue, white, and off. Lovely, so that's doing its thing quite happily. And then I'm gonna do a quick chase to make sure that that looks the part as well. And that looks good. The pixels are all lining up beautifully. That's doing the job nicely. So we now want to go back into X lights and test our two panels. Um, I'm going to push data out directly from X lights during this testing. So I'm going to put the Pi into bridge mode for this. Um, now we don't recommend that you do that for a show. Uh, there's quite a lot of data that needs to traverse the network during showtime and any network hiccups um, can cause problems. So normally you would upload your sequences to the Raspberry Pi uh, or BBB and then run it in remote mode separate from your main controller. But we'll put it into bridge mode for this testing. So go back to status and change it into bridge mode. And we'll make a note then that there we go. Okay, so we've got a, an IP address on the Pi here of 192.168.1.101. So I'll remember that and we'll make sure that that's right in x -Lite momentarily. We now need to add the controller in x -Lite. So I'm going to go for a Discover. There we go. And x -Lite automatically finds the instance of FPP. It does quick network scan and finds the instance for us and that's grand so there it is it's ready for us it's set up with using ddp as the protocol which is ideal because it means we don't have to set up the input side on fpp and it's given us one universe and one channel now because fpp isn't expecting us to have more than one panel we need to do a little bit of tweaking here to make it work. So I'm going to uncheck auto size and I'm going to set the number of channels to the total of number of channels on our two panels. If we go back to our FPP, we can see that our total number of channels is 36864. So I'm just going to grab that, I'll highlight and copy that. And then we'll put that into X lights here as the number of channels. There we go. So that's now giving us the full channel size. And we've now got to assign uh, the models to it. Now it's automatically realized that it can put these two in here. So we'll just go and double check that it's working okay. So under layout, We've got matrix, uh, that's set to st uh, start at channel one. So if I change use start channel to FPP and it's moved it to FPP one, so that's grand. 
and then matrix two is set to follow uh, matrix uh, one. So that's just gonna follow straight after, which is exactly what we need for the layout from going top left to the bottom right and then starting top left again. So that's perfect. Now the other thing I'm gonna do in here just for demonstration is I'm just gonna create a group. So if I right click and add empty group, I'm gonna call it uh, matrix group. There we go. And I'm gonna put our two models in. There we go, so our two models are in there now, so that we can demonstrate the two working together and the two working independently. So I'm gonna go for a sequencer now, and we'll start a new sequence. File, new sequence, animation, 20 frames per second. There we go. So we can see we've got our matrix group at the top and then our two individuals underneath. So we can demonstrate that these are working now by simply dragging a butterfly effect onto each of them in turn. So if I start with matrix uh, one or the original matrix, click on it and we enable output to lights, we get our first panel. If I then move this using my mouse, uh, sorry, using the uh, numerical keys on my keyboard, I've highlighted it, move up one, and there we go, it took a moment to uh, to get going. And it's a little bit glitchy because it's on the end of the Wi-Fi. Um, so that's why you really wanna run a matrix um, directly off the Pi. So just run the Pi or BBB in remote mode rather than direct. This is, is glitching a little bit on Wi-Fi. And then if I move this uh, butterfly effect from matrix two up to the group, we should see it across the two uh, working together, but uh, to display the same thing. So there we go. So we should see the pattern now. Now it looks like I've got my left and my right muddled up by the looks of it. So I've got the, the crosses appearing on this one when they should be appearing on this one and vice versa. So we'll stop this and we'll fix that now. Uh, I'm gonna go into layout and just spin these around. So this one is starting at FPP one at the moment and this one is starting at FPP two. So matrix two, uh, matrix one I've got on my uh, on my left here, but it's your right, that's what I've done wrong. So let me just spin these two around in here. I've got my left and my right muddled up, uh, working back to front with the camera. So I've just spun them around there. Save that. And we'll now go back to sequencer highlight it and enable. There we go, we're now the right way around. Um, I've just muddled up my left and my right. So we are it's a little bit glitchy because the Wi-Fi it's running across, um, the Pi is, is not connected to it, it's just on Wi-Fi here. So there we go. Uh, it was a little bit complicated that one, but I hope uh, you've got all the information you need out of it to have a go anyway. And if you get stuck, don't hesitate to drop me a note. Um, you can find me on Facebook in the DIY uh, panels group. Uh, I'm on the Extreme Sequences. I'm on European Lighting Fanatics. And of course, I'm on panel, panelsrus.co.uk uh, on Facebook. Don't forget to like and share. Hope you found it useful. And, uh, and we'll look forward to having another panel video for you very soon. Cheers. Mm -hmm.